Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. The first January 6th Capitol attack trial has begun. 49-year-old Guy Reffitt of Texas is accused of five felonies, including taking an AR-15 and a Colton Wesson 40 caliber semi-automatic pistol to DC. He's also accused of entering the restricted Capitol grounds with his handgun, impeding law enforcement, obstructing an official proceeding, and threatening to kill members of his family if they turned him in. So Refit, who's a member of the 3 percenter militia group, is facing decades in prison if he's convicted on all or even just some of the more serious charges. Yet he issued a defiant statement prior to the start of his trial, which was shared on a Telegram channel that's specifically for January 6th defendants. It said, quote, the beginning of the 1-6 political prisoner trials, Orwellian thought crimes, spies, and the Ministry of Truth. Yeah, as if he's in jail and facing five felony counts for only thinking about committing crimes. Sure, Jan. Anyway, Refit's statement also noted that he might be acquitted on all charges, which I find very hard to believe given the amount of video evidence and, you know, the upcoming testimony from his own children even. And Refit's statement went on to reference the trucker convoy, which shows how completely out of touch with reality he is. He wrote, quote, another potential outcome is the truckers could spin this into a new paradigm shift for our country. Who wants to tell him that this trucker convoy never actually made it above like 250 rigs and then it fizzled out and dwindled down to about 10 when they hit D.C., you know, and on the night of, of Biden's State of the Union address? Very sad. But Refa did make one sane and logical statement. He said, quote, this will be the beginning of what could make or break this nation and every subsequent trial henceforth will be a spectacle. It will also be for the heart and soul of the republic. So he is very right about that. The outcome of his trial will have wide ranging and very significant consequences for all other January 6 cases. This could very well dictate the future direction of the entire January 6th investigation. You know, if prosecutors fail to do an effective job or if the jury is tainted by even one lone MAGA holdout and it results in a hung jury, other January 6th defendants are going to think twice. They might not be so quick to accept plea deals. They might just say, you know, I'm going to roll the dice. I'm going to take my chances. And that means cooperation is going to end. It'll be even more difficult to get to those at the top. So, but back to Refit's statement, um, he didn't end on a note of sanity. I'll just say that he veered off into conspiracy land again. He wrote, quote, one thing is for sure. They're trying very hard to control your life. They don't much like it that you think without their help. Tyranny is real, it's powerful, and it's here. It's this country we stand with and are willing to die for. I am prepared to stare down the barrel of tyranny to receive the bullet of freedom. <laughs> okay, yeah, how poetic. Um, so he's willing to die for his country, but he isn't willing to do some jail time for the country. Anyway, as I mentioned, Refit's trial officially started this week. There were two days of jury selection. Um, jurors with any type of bias or ties to the Capitol were immediately dismissed. And interestingly, when jurors were asked how much knowledge they had about what took place on January 6th, Several said that they pretty much almost entirely avoided any coverage. And so they had very little to no knowledge of what actually took place, which is unbelievable to me. Uh, many others couldn't name, like they knew what went on, the general idea, but they couldn't name anyone who took part in the Capitol attack. Many of them only remembered the QAnon shaman because of his outfit, but they still couldn't tell you his name. 
Um, when the jury selection was complete, though, they ended up with nine men, seven women, and it was comprised of nine white, five black, and two Asian jurors. Twelve, of course, are primary jurors, and then the four others will be alternates to act, a, act as a backup. Um, so when opening statements began, prosecutors said that over the course of this trial, the jury's going to hear about the alleged threats that Refit made to his children. They're going to hear actual audio recordings that I believe his son took of those threats. They're going to hear from police officers and uh, another three percenter militia member who interacted with Refit. And then they're going to hear Refit's own statements, which were captured by his GoPro camera on January 6th. The prosecutor also said that they're going to share Refit's Zoom meetings. Uh, they have Telegram chats, and then they have other recorded conversations in which Refit's intentions were really clear that he planned to stop the counting of the Electoral College votes, and he planned to stop the transfer of power. So the prosecutors told the jury, quote, he planned to light the match that would start the fire. He wanted to stop Congress from doing its job. On January 6th, he, with his bulletproof vest, helmet, megaphone, flex cuffs, and holstered gun, the defendant went to the Capitol and did exactly what he said he was going to do. And the prosecutor noted how Refit bragged after the Capitol attack. He wrote on Telegram, quote, we took the Capitol. And he wrote that in all caps. I'll say this for Refit. One thing, he, he spelled Capitol correctly. So I'll give him that. Um, anyway, the, the prosecutors also alleged that Refit carried, quote, police style flexi cuffs so he could restrain members of Congress when he encountered them. And they told the jury that following the Capitol attack, Refit encouraged others to destroy January 6th evidence. And he told them that he had a workaround idea for how to deal with firearm restrictions. Refit also allegedly told other three percenter members, quote, they were lucky we didn't shoot them. They really need to be grateful. And Refit's attorney then stepped up. He gave a brief opening and he tried to paint Refit as someone basically who's full of shit. <laughs> His defense attorney, William Welch, said, quote, Guy does brag. He exaggerates and he rants. He uses a lot of hyperbole and that upsets people. Um, the attorney also denied that Refit was armed or aggressive. They're trying to say that he had the makings of a gun on him, but it wasn't a fully constructed gun somehow. So, you know, today was the first day of testimony. It was pretty emotional. Prosecutors played audio recordings of frantic calls for help that were made by officers who were completely overwhelmed by the crowd. They were yelling and screaming for help. Um, and then they called Officer Shawnee Kirkhoff to the stand. Kirkhoff testified that she fired like 50 to 60 pepper balls at Refit. And he was standing there yelling into a megaphone and he kept coming towards her. But Refit just continued to move forward because he had his protective gear on. So as she put it, he was padded up. So it just didn't affect him. And the officer said she was, quote, panicked. And she feared that the mob would reach the building and reach the lawmakers and staff. Uh, then they called Capitol Police Inspector Monique Moore. She also testified. She got choked up when she was testifying. And she said that she recalled hearing, quote, my officers screaming for help. And so she had to kind of compose herself. And then she went on to tell the jury, quote, this was our first time ever seeing anything of such, at least for my 24 years. We've never seen the actions of individuals who came up to the Capitol with total disregard of the police, the law, and democracy. Prosecutors also then showed surveillance video taken inside the building, which, which showed Capitol windows being broken from the outside and then the domestic terrorists climbing inside. And reporters who were in the court said that what interested the jury most was the actual video of Refit, of what he actually did 
on Capitol grounds, how he was behaving. So, you know, I hope Refik keeps bragging. I hope he keeps issuing damning statements. And I hope that the prosecutors can share them. I hope that they can use it against him in trial. Um, you know, in upcoming days, prosecutors said that they plan to use Refit's own words against him. And prosecutors quoted Refit to the jury, alleging that Refit told others that his goal was, quote, ripping them out by their hair, every fucking one of them, dragging them out, kicking and fucking screaming. I just want to see Pelosi's head hitting every fucking stair on the way out and Mitch McConnell, too. So, you know, compelling evidence. I personally think the most compelling evidence is going to be the testimony from Refit's son and the fact that his own son turned him in. I mean, this is someone who lived with him for more than 18 years, and he feared that his father was so dangerous and so out of control that he actually reported his own father to the FBI. If he doesn't know his father, and what his father is capable of, who does? You don't know someone until you live with them. You can say it's hyperbole all day long. So I'll keep you guys posted on the status of this case and what takes place in court, of course, over the coming days. Um, and when I hear something else of interest, I will let you know. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care. I'll talk with you soon.